Hello, my name is Derek Atkins, and this video is an introduction to the syllabus for the course TS 560, Worldview and Biblical Decision Making at the East Asia School of Theology. In this video, I will walk you through this syllabus to highlight some different things that you need to take note of. So let's begin to look at this syllabus. The very first thing I want to tell you is where you can find this syllabus online. You can find this syllabus online at Populi. So if you'll go to Populi, you go into your Populi account, and then you will find a heading that says your courses or my courses. Click on that heading, then it will you will find a list of the courses on in which you have enrolled in at East. Click on the course TS 560, Worldview and Biblical Decision Making, and then it will take you to a page where you will have a menu. And on the left-hand side of the menu, you will find um, listed, one of the options will be listed as syllabus. Click on syllabus, and then it will take you to this syllabus. So that's how you can find this syllabus online. So let's take a look at this syllabus. First, I want to point out the course number and course name. So this is, course, the course number is TS560, Worldview and Biblical Decision Making. This course is a two credit hour course. It is, it is um, the location is the East Campus in Singapore, and this course is for the fall semester of the 2024-2025 academic year. I do want you to take note of the meeting day and meeting times. We will meet on Wednesdays from 9 to 10 a.m. on campus plus an additional optional hour until 11 a.m. And I will talk a little bit more about this later on. Next, we have some information about the instructors. There are two instructors in this course. My name is Derek Atkins. I have a Master of Theology. My email address is derekatkins at east.edu.sg. And my phone number is 9240-2873. Your other instructor is Lewis Winkler, who has a PhD. His email address is lewis at east.edu.sg. His contact number is 8606-9039. So if you need to contact either of us, at any time, please do so. The next section is a short description of this course so that you will know what this course is about. And I encourage you to take some time to read this course description. Then the next section talks about the course purpose, especially how the purpose of this course connects with the mission of EAST. Then after the course purpose, you have a section that talks about student learning outcomes. At East, we talk about head, heart, and hands. And so these student learning outcomes reflect that. Instead of only we call the head, no, we call the heart, B, or values. And then we talk about the hands as behaviors or do. So please take some time to look over, over these um, student learning outcomes because these are the things we expect you to be able to do or to know or to have um, affective changes about by the end of this course. The next section 
is about talks about your textbooks for this course. There are two required textbooks. The first is Transforming Worldviews, an Anthropological Understanding of How People Change by Paul Hebert. And the second textbook is Choosing the Good, Christian Ethics in a Complex World by Dennis Hollinger. In addition to these two books, there is another book that is highly recommended but is not required, and that is um, Living at the Crossroads, an Introduction to Christian Worldview by Michael Goheen and Craig Bartholomew. Please note, please take note of this, this section right here. Besides the normal avenues of obtaining Christian books and East Physical Library in Singapore, both of these texts are also available to read and or download through the Digital Theological Library, or DTL. And here is the um, address right here, to which all East program students have free access. Also note, however, that DTL books are accessible by program and credit student only during your time at East. Thus, it is highly recommended that you obtain your own copies for your later life and future ministry. So what I have done is I have a Kindle app on my phone. So I have downloaded these books onto my Kindle app. That way, I literally have these books with me at all times. So if you have a Kindle app, I would highly encourage you to buy books, these textbooks from Amazon. If you do not have a Kindle app or do not have access to something similar, then I recommend that you buy a hard copy of these textbooks. And that way you will have them available for you, you to use for your life and your future ministry even after you graduate from East. Now let's look at some learning, what your learning tasks are. In this course, you do have a number of learning tasks. And these tasks have been put together to help you to get the most out of this course. So let's look at these learning tasks. Learning task A, this is your first learning task, are your textbooks readings. You will, you are going, you are expected to read 403 pages. And if you read these at an average speed of 15 pages per hour, that works out to about 27 hours. So you will read assigned sections in both the required textbooks and keep track of your reading using a reading report, which will be available on Populi and which is due November the 8th. And this reading report, you will use this reading report to show if you read the assigned chapters and whether they were read on time. On time means that they were read carefully and thoroughly prior to the class session for which they, are, they were assigned. Reading the chapters late received half credit for that assignment. Failing to read the assignment at all received no credit for that reading. While it might be tempting in the midst of our busy lives to merely skim or read the textbook as quickly as possible, rather than thoughtfully and carefully, I am encouraging you to see the readings as an opportunity to further expand your learning experiences and engage your heart and your mind with, its sub with the subject matter. As such, they have been chosen for the purpose of both enhancing and significantly supplementing what is covered in the class section discussion times. So 
So that's your first learning task, textbooks, readings. Now we come to learning task B. This is your second learning task. These are your video lectures, and they make up a about 11 hours total for the entire course. Since this is a flipped classroom course, students will view the lectures and read the, the assigned readings before the classroom time together to prepare for in-class discussion. In other words, Lewis and I are not going to be giving our lectures during our class connection time. Instead, we have recorded our lectures online, and you will watch these video lectures online before the class. Then, once you come to the class, we will have classroom discussion about our video lectures. You will also use a video watch log, which is available on Popular, Populi, and which is due on November the 8th to keep track of your progress in watching the class preparation videos. Watching these videos on time, meaning before the corresponding class connection time, will earn you full credit or two points. While watching them in part or after the relevant class connection time will earn you half credit, that is one point. Not watching them at all will earn you no credit or zero points. So that's your second learning task, video lectures. Your third learning task is our pre-class worksheet and discussion board interaction. These um, make up about eight hours total for the entire course. They are due each week before class. So here's how it, this works out. Every, every week, there will be a pre-class worksheet for you to complete that includes the assigned videos to watch, see above, as well as discussion questions to answer using the relevant discussion tab in Populi. While there is no upper limit to your answers and interactions, each of your answers should ideally be at least 200 words long and your interactions with other students, see below, should total at least 100 words. Not counting the time it takes to read the material and listen to the video lectures, these online interactions should require approximately eight total hours of time. So you're going to write um, an answer in response to the pre-class worksheet. You'll post your answer on Populi, and then your student, fellow students will respond to your, to your um, response, and you will also have a chance to respond to other students' responses. Concerning your interactions with other students, which is part two of the assignment, they should be substantive. Below are some suggested possible ways, there are more than these, in which you might respond substantively to your fellow students. You could state agreements and provide additional supportive evidence or examples. You could ask additional questions for clarification and or provide additional ideas or perspectives on the answer. You could advance the participants' ideas further by providing additional references or support and providing feedback on the participants' experience or perspective. And you can state disagreements, if any, but you need to provide evidence or support using a professional and respectful tone and proper netiquette. Please note, for your responses, you cannot interact with any answer that already has 
two student responses. In this case, you will need to search for another answer with which you can interact. And in, in addition, as course facilitator, I may also interact with a student answer, but this is not a student response and therefore is not counted toward the two maximum student responses per answered question. Each weekly discussion will be worth five possible points and will be graded as follows. Responses to the worksheet discussion question, that is four possible points. At least one response given to another response responder is worth one possible point. So that is learning task C, pre-class worksheet and discussion board interactions. Learning task D, this is your fourth learning task, class participation. Students will be evaluated each week for both the quality and quantity of their contribution to the course discussion times. This will be this will be challenging for some students who are shy to share, come from a context where student sharing is not encouraged or do not have confidence in their English ability to share. However, not sharing in class is considered not participating in class, so it is necessary for the sake of a student's grade that he or she overcome his or her fear of actively participating in class discussion. Furthermore, as this is a course in which worldview and ethic about worldview and ethics, it is easy for students to give a my personal view answer that in no way relates to the readings and video lectures. Students are expected to interact with the readings and lectures in their contribution. In addition, students are free and encouraged to disagree with instructors and classmates in this course, but the disagreement must still demonstrate engagement with the course material. Debate and discussion are expected to be done in a winsome way that reflects Christian character. Therefore, students will be graded as follows for class discussion. Student does not complete contribute to a class discussion at all. That student will be given a grade of zero, zero points. Student contribute to class discussion, but does not demonstrate a clear understanding of and engagement with the synchronous reading and video lectures. That student will earn three points for that particular class discussion. A, the student contributes to class discussion and demonstrates a fair, clear understanding of and engagement with the synchronous reading and video lectures. That student will get five points. So I hope you notice that if you don't discuss at all, you're going to get zero points. But even if you even if you don't yet fully understand everything, it is in your best interest to go ahead and participate in class discussion because you will get at least three points. And if you demonstrate that you have a clearer, a clear understanding of what's been read and what's being talked about in your discussion, you will get five points. So I want to encourage you to discuss during class. We value everybody's um, participation in class. So that's the fourth learning task, classroom participation. Now let's look at learning task number five, non-biblical worldview presentation. This should take about 10 hours total. This, this assignment is due August 21st. In assigned groups, 
students will present to the class in 10 minutes maximum the dominant non-biblical worldview in a particular Asian ministry context. For example, Islam, Hinduism, animism, Confucianism, modernity, or post-modernity. The presentation must be clearly and must clearly and accurately answer the following five questions. Number one, creation. How does this worldview suggest the, that the world came into existence? How does this compare with the Bible's view of the world's existence? Number two, purpose. How does this worldview define the purpose of a person's existence? How does this compare with the Bible's view of the purpose for our existence? Number three, problem. How does this worldview define the biggest problem in the world? How does this compare with the Bible's view of the purpose for our existence? Number four, solution. How does this worldview suggest that this biggest problem is solved? How does this compare with the Bible's view of how this problem is solved? And five, destination. Where does this worldview think that the world is ultimately going? What is this view of time? And when is, end, is the end point of the world? How does this compare with the Bible's view of time and where the world is heading. To prepare for the presentation, the group must not only research the assigned non-biblical worldview, it must also find an interview using a modified version of the five aforementioned questions, at least three people who claim to be adherents of the worldview they are researching. As a result of your interviews and research, try to include some in reflections on the ways in which the people you interviewed both confirmed and differed in their answers from the formal research you did on the worldview. We will try our best to take into consideration students' ministry contacts and assigned groups according to contacts, but cannot promise that the course makeup will allow for this. Groups will be assigned on the first day of class, July 17. These presentations will take place on August 21st, meaning that students will need to begin meeting in their groups to research and interview adherents of their assigned worldview very early in the class. The PowerPoint for this presentation is due before class time on August 21st, along with copies of all interviews taken, as well as a list of resources used to prepare for the presentation. Please turn all of the, these materials into populating. A grading rubric for this presentation, along with a seven question survey to be used for the interviews is available on Populi. Now we come to learning task F. This is your sixth learning task, and that is an ethical issue presentation. This, this assignment should take about 15 hours to complete. Students will work in group to give a 15 minute final presentation to the class on an ethical issue of particular importance to their future ministry contacts. To help give ideas for the presentation comp topic, an appendix A is provided at the end of this syllabus, which highlights some of the major ethical issues being faced in Asia today. This presentation will need to demonstrate mastery of the following. One, Comparing the differences in ethical foundations between a biblical worldview and the non-Christian worldview of the student's future ministry contacts. And two, 
using the biblical decision-making process given in class to draw conclusions about the ethical topic chosen. The presentation will do this by answering the following questions. One, what is the usual, that is, non-biblical view of the ethical issue in the student's ministry context? Two, what are the characteristics of the non-biblical worldview that lead to non-biblical conclusions about the ethical issue? Three, how does a biblical worldview give a foundation for answering this ethical issue? And four, how does the biblical decision-making model given in the course help the student to draw conclusions about the ethical issue? This project will be completed in groups that will be assigned on the first day of class. You will work on this on the project as groups throughout the semester. The first six weeks of this course should help you to answer questions two and three, while the second six weeks of the course will help you with one and four. To prepare for the presentation, the group must not only research the assigned ethical issue, it must also find and interview using the six-person moral perspectives survey provided on Populi, at least five people who claim to be adherents of the worldview they, present, they presented in the first presentation of a non-biblical worldview. As a result of your interviews and research, try to include some reflections on the ways in which the people you interviewed reflect their worldview by the way they think about and approach ethics in general and the ethical issue in particular. Are they consistent or do they borrow their thinking from other worldviews and ideas? The scheduled due dates for this presentation are as follows. 17th of July, groups are assigned. 28th of August, groups to prepare ethical issue to course facilitators, to propose group to propose ethical issue to course facilitators. 29th of August, facilitators will either accept, reject, or revise the proposed issue. 4th of September, if initial issue is rejected, Groups to propose second ethical issue to facilitators. 5th of September, facilitators will either accept the second proposed issue or assign an issue to the group. 23rd of October, first half of groups will pre present their ethical issue. 30th of October, second half of groups will present their ethical issue. The PowerPoint for this presentation is due before the class time on the assigned day of the presentation, along with copies of all interviews taken, as well as the list of resources used to prepare for the presentation. Please turn in all of these materials into Populi. A grading rubric for this presentation, along with a six-question survey to be used for the interviews, is available on Populi. And your final learning task is an ethical worldview declaration project. This assignment is due on November 15th. As a way to tie together and communicate what you have learned or relearned and intend to apply in this course, we want you to prayerfully and thoughtfully create an ethical worldview declaration project that seeks to incorporate all of the basic elements. For ex example, evaluative, affective, cognitive, behavioral, and narrative aspects of an ethically Christian worldview 
that is grounded within the concrete context in which you live and minister. Please note that this is not a research paper. The purpose of this project is to help you honestly examine and identify the things you truly believe, value, are excited by, consider right and wrong, and actually live out in your daily life. For example, try to answer questions like, what do I consider right and wrong? What stories do I consider most important to tell? What do I consider to be really real? What do I spend most of my time thinking about? What do I care about and genuinely value the most? And what activities do I regularly practice? And why, as a Christian, in my contemporary cultural context? The actual format is largely up to you, but try to speak from the heart and be creative and instructive in how you communicate the way you view and engage with the world around you. As such, your declaration can be a simple statement of how you really live, what you believe, truly value, and consider morally important, but it can also take the form of a story, a poem, a song, a work of art, a video clip, etc. So long as it meaningfully communicates these aforementioned things. In general, the project should be as long as necessary for you to adequately explain to someone else what you as a believer in Jesus believe, value, are genuinely passionate about, and think is right and wrong. It may help you to look back over each of the class sessions as a review to get some ideas about what to share in this declaration. As a basic guide, if you choose to do a more standard declaration versus an artistic one, I would suggest that you write at least three pages of material, double space, using normal size 12-point font. You can certainly write more than this and are encouraged to do so, but to go into enough depth and provide sufficient clarity, three pages is the bare minimum. If you choose to do a work of art or something similar, please include some sort of explanation of the meaning of the work, why you created it to include the elements that you did, and how much time it took to produce. This project will be worth a maximum of 50 points and will be graded in conjunction with the relevant rubric uploaded to the course lessons lab tab in Populi using the following point totals and grading factors. Basic on-time completion of the assignment, five possible points. Language and style, five possible points. Integration and engagement with course materials, 10 possible points. Creativity, 10 possible points. Depth and thoughtfulness, 10 possible points. Overall content quality and impact, 10 possible points. Please note, these criteria may be adjusted depending on the type of project you create. Also, if you do an, an especially good job on this assignment, it might be used as an artifact in your final year summative project. So it is to your advantage to seek to do an excellent job on this declaration. And so now you have a summary of how much time um, each of these assignments should take. You also have a summary of how much um, points are going to be given to each assignment in this learning task in this course, what percentage that is, and the due date for each of these learning tasks. And then we also have listed the course grading scale together with the um, corresponding letter grade. 
The next section are, is your course schedule and learning activities. This is the actual schedule for the course. So please note that this syllabus, along with course assignments and due date, are subject to change. It is, in the, it is the student's responsibility to check properly for any correction and or update to the syllabus. Any changes will be clearly explained in a course announcement as well as through email. So while Lewis and I will do our part to um, communicate any course changes, it is also your responsibility to do what you can to find out about any course change, any course date changes. Now I want to talk about class connection time courtesy and netiquette guidelines. We live in a world full of distraction and there are many demands upon us as both students and as Christian workers. In our busy lives, it is very tempting to try to multitask in an attempt to maximize our time. However, out of respect for the instructor and your fellow learners, please refrain from texting, reading text messages, playing games, making calls, and or answering your phone during any online class connection times. Doing any of these aforementioned things is inconsiderate to the classroom community, detrimental to your personal learning opportunities, and dishonoring to God. Now, let me just add that sometimes I know that there may be emergencies. And so if you get a notice that you have an emergency call to make or an emergency text to respond to, I would ask that you leave the classroom and take your phone call out in the hallway or take your text message out in the hallway. This way you will be, um, you, your phone call or your text message will not interfere with the class discussion between the instructors and the other students. So I, I do realize that emergencies come up. And so if you have an emergency, please take your call outside of the classroom. That would be greatly appreciated. Because this course is fully online, Netiquette is a set of rules for behaving properly online. To foster a safe and respectful online learning environment, you are encouraged to comment, question, or critique an idea, but you are not invited to attack an individual. In other words, you can attack an idea or a certain action but you cannot attack an individual person, okay? The following netiquette tips will enhance the learning experience for everyone in the course. Do not dominate any discussion. Give other students the opportunity to join in the discussion. Do not use inflammatory language. Present ideas appropriately. Share tips with other students. Keep an open mind and be willing to express even your minority opinion. Minority opinions should also be respected and taken seriously. Do not hesitate to ask for feedback. Using appropriate humor is acceptable. Now I want to mention um, our policy on the use of GAI. We're talking about generative artificial intelligence. So any use of generative artificial intelligence, GAI resources and website for this class is prohibited. If you have any questions about what constitutes use of GAI, please do not hesitate to ask the course facilitator for further clarification of this policy. Please note 
unless otherwise noted, synchronous learning sessions meet every Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m. online and in room 305 of East Mission Hub. Please also note, if you wish and can stay longer after a short break, I and Lewis will be available until 11 a.m. to answer additional questions and further interact with session material, but you must attend only the first hour of the synchronous section, session. In other words, you are required to attend the first hour of the synchronous session. You may attend the second hour if you want to. If you don't want to or cannot for any reason, you do not have to attend the second hour. That is optional, okay? I want to make that very clear. Okay, then what follows in the syllabus is a, um, a table listing the different um, class dates, the topics we will be discussing, the activities you need to do before class, the activities we will do during class, and the due date for your learning task. So please be sure to refer to this table throughout the course, okay? So if you have any questions at any time about what needs to be done and when it needs to be done, please refer to this table which has our class schedule and the schedule for all of your learning tasks. So we have 14 weeks of classes. And then after the 14 weeks are finished, you have your reading reports and video watch log due on November the 8th. And then your ethical worldview declaration project is due on November 15. Okay. Now, the next section on this syllabus is information on course policies. And you can click here to access the course policy document for important and essential information on the following. Course policies on class attendance, assignment, plagiarism, and proper use of course material resources provided by the instructors, mutual commitment between instructors and students, technical assistance for Populi, which is the East Learning Management System, the Digital Theological Library, which is only available for credit students, and the Logos Bible Software, which is available only for program students. All students are to access and read this document before the start of the course and to abide by the stated policies. So please take the time to read these policies so that you will know what they are. The next section is a list of additional learning resources. So um, as you can see, we, we have... Uh, put together a lot of resources. And so when you do your research projects, this can be a good starting place for you to find information that will help you in your various projects. So you can see that we put together a lot of material that you can use to help you. Now we have Appendix A. This lists some ethical challenges in the contemporary context. So please note that the following list of ethical issues is highly incomplete. If there is an issue that you would like to explore and present to um, that is not included here, you may propose that topic that you are interested in to the course facilitators for approval. So please don't think that you are limited to these topics. However, if you are interested in any of these topics, please please do choose that topic for your um, 
ethical issues project. So we have end of life and matters of life and death, reproductive technologies, body and self-care, traditional practices, treatments and medications, sexual ethics, globalization, technology and ecology, social justice, inequality and economics, pluralism and religious plurality. So these are just some of the many different ethical issues that are out there. And so if you find any of these issues that are of interest to you, please choose them. If you have another issue that you are interested in, please contact Lewis or me and ask if you can use that as your issue for your ethical um, issues project. So this is the um, syllabus. Again, you can find this syllabus on Populi. And if you have any questions about any of anything that I have discussed and gone over in this syllabus, I suggest you do two things. First, reread the section that you have a question about, and perhaps that will answer your question right there. But if that still does not answer your question, then please contact Lewis or me for clarification. So I hope this um, gives you an I some idea of what to expect in our course, and we look forward to seeing you in class.